So here is the analysis of the data from the acceleration due to gravity experiment. And we read off the um, data backwards. That's because um, it showed the last data point first. So I already put in here that this was 30 centimeters, 25 centimeters, 20 centimeters, and so on. Of course, I put down 0 0.3, 0 0.25 meters, and so on. And here's the time. So the fastest time, I'm sorry, the longest time was the point was 1626 seconds, and then at 25 centimeters was 0 0.1429. Then you notice that automatically in Excel here, um, graphs these data. That's how I have prepared it. Okay, and 0 0.0. 715 and of course I got this directly from the video we recorded okay and then <clears throat> you can see that for the you know, first five centimeters it's four hundredth of a second during the next five centimeters if you compare these two it's a little bit over three hundredth of a second then over the next five centimeters it's oh like little over two one hundredth of a second then still a little over two hundredth of a second then just about two hundredth of a second and just a little bit below two hundredth of a second that um, that's the time it took for each five centimeters and that of course means that it accelerated it got faster and faster and therefore the times got in between for each five centimeters got less and less okay um, as I said I had programmed Excel here in such a way that it would um, graph the data points and then I told it use a trend line, a parabolic trend line that is, and you can see that here x squared is um, will give me um, a quadratic relationship between the time down here, so square the time and the distance y here. Notice that Excel uses x squared, and of course it's supposed to be t squared, but I can't do anything about it, so my x squared is actually t squared and then the rest here this here has no meaning this means simply it starts at zero which is supposed to be um, and this here means it's supposed to start at zero meters per second but these are data and therefore there's a small measurement error in there and so I will disregard this as well um, it's actually close enough to zero and then this one r squared equals one means how close to fit as well for five data points quadratic relationship I have a pretty good fit okay so I program everything in here and that means that it's already um, analyzing the data for me and this is the number I need the 4.9037 and I'm gonna scroll this a little bit down okay let's see because I need this stuff down here And so I need the 4.9037 coefficient because the equation is y equals one half gt squared. That's the free fall equation. And so the coefficient is, it's hard to show here, the one half g, that's the coefficient. But notice there is no one half in here because it's already incorporated. So what I'm going to do with this coefficient is I multiply it by 2 because then I will have my correct the g, the acceleration due to gravity. As I calculate that by 2, 4.0937, I'm going to come up with 9.8074 centimeters per second squared. And then in the book you will only find the three significant figures anyway to compare to. So I'm going to round this to 9.81. Oops, not centimeters, but meters per second squared 9.81 meters per second squared and here in Alaska it should be 9.82 meters per second squared so I have an error of approximately 0.1 percent